Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and welcome to another tutorial on multi-threading from Cave on Programming. And this tutorial is going to be on callable on fu and future. And um, these are two classes that enable you to get return results from your threads and they also allow your thread code to throw exceptions. So um, I'm going to start by um, creating a thread pool here. So I'll say executor service executor equals um, executors dot um, new cache thread pool and um, I'll um, do control shift O to add the input there and actually I'll do control M to maximize my editor as well and then I'm gonna to start with I'm just gonna submit a task to this executor um, using um, a runnable as before so I'll say submit and I'll use an anonymous class here and I'll say new runnable and I'll have a public void run in here and I'll put some code in here to run and I also want my um, I want my program to terminate when my thread finishes running so I'll say executor dot shut down so that the managerial thread kind of finishes when my thread finishes and here in run I'm gonna have I'll say sysout starting so in, so we know when the, the thread's starting to run and I'll have another sysout here finished so we know when, when the code's finished and I want this to simulate doing some useful work I want this to um, just sleep for um, a random amount of time so I'm going to say random random equals new random and I'll say um, int duration equals random dot next int and I'll have it sleep for up to four seconds there, four thousand milliseconds and I'll put the sleep in so I'll say thread dot sleep duration like this and I need to handle the interrupted exception of course so surround with try catch and um, now if, if I run this this is going to work um, so starting and then it sleeps for a bit and then says finished but the question is how can I get a return result from this code if I want one and um, you could have a class that implements runnable some separate class and this code could store a result in an instance variable and then down here I could access that instance variable but there's another way of doing it using callable and future that is um, perhaps a bit more elegant and uh, you can also, you might also wonder how can you have this throw an exception and we will also see how to handle that. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just cut this code with Control X and instead of new runnable I'm going to say new callable and callable is a parameterized class and um, the parameter it takes here is the type that you want to return from your running thread code so I'll, um, I'll implement the missing methods now of this callable interface by clicking on this error thing here. Um, I need to do the import of course and I can say add unimplemented methods and um, so runnable has a method called run, public void run and callable has a method called call and call actually returns a value and the type of the value that it returns is whatever you specify here so if I put integer here, I have to put integer here, but it could be any class, of course. So I'll paste my code in here, and just to have something to return here, I'm going to return the duration that I'm sleeping for. And um, now that will run just as just as before, as it did when I had a, a runnable. But I can now down here get the return result from this um, call method, and I can do that using a future. So um, when I call submit here, it returns a future object and the future is also parameterized and the um, class that I need to put in here is whatever I put here and the same thing of course that I also have here. So in this case it's going to be an integer and I'll call that, I'll give that a name, I'll just call it future and I'll say that equals um, the return of submit and control shift O to add the import there and um, I'll just maximize my editor with control M again and um, so down here now I can get 
um, I can use this to get this return result. And to do that, I just say future.get like that. So I can put, let's output that. I'll say sysout um, result is like that. And then I'll move this bracket. So I have a plus there, move the bracket to the end. And uh, this future.get throws two kinds of exceptions. I'll handle those and it throws an interrupted exception. And we're actually going to look at interrupted exceptions and interrupting threads in the next tutorial. But for now, I'll just leave this print stat trace in there. And it also throws an execution exception. And for the moment, I'm just going to do a sysout on that exception. So if I run this, oh, and you might wonder, well, um, I've called get here, but um, I haven't waited for this thread to finish. So I could, of course, say executor. And, you know, there might be, uh, there could be, I mean, it's worth pointing out that there could be hundreds or thousands of threads that I'm running here with submit. And I could I could store, store my futures in like an, an array list or a hash or something. Um, and down here I could call executor dot await termination to await for all those threads to finish. But um, if you don't wait for your thread or threads to finish and you call get, um, get will just block until the thread associated with this future has terminated. So I can run this and if I run it, what happens is my thread runs, starts, sleeps for a random amount of time, then it terminates. And when it terminates, get, get stops blocking and I get the result that I return here. So um, that's how to get return values from your threads. And now let's have a look at how to throw an exception from call. And so uh, I can do that by saying, well, let's just arbitrarily say here, if duration is greater than 2000, so this will happen about half the time, I'll throw an exception. And I can, it throws um, exception, the parent of all exceptions. So um, I could throw any exception here and um, just, um, although it's not appropriate, just for the hell of it, I'll throw an IO exception like this and I'll give it a message. Um, sleeping for too long, like that. Now, um, do Control Shift O to add the import. And if what will happen is, if I throw an exception from here, from call, that exception will get thrown from get, but get won't throw this exception. It will throw a, um, it will throw um, here an, an execution exception, and the cause of that execution exception will be my exception here. So let's have a look at that. So sometimes it works if it sleeps for less than 2000, but um, I've said that if it's going to be more than 2000, throw an exception. So with a bit of luck, here we'll get one. And so now I've thrown an IO exception and um, here it's caught a execution exception. And the cause of that was my IO exception. And just to kind of um, make that a bit more explicit, and by the way, I could do, I could do sys out here, um, e dot get message, and execution exception will carry my message that I specified here. So if I run that, and um, if it sleeps for more than 2000, then I get my message down here. But if I actually want to retrieve my original exception, I could say IO exception x, let's say, equals e dot get cause like this. And of course, I need to cast it to the right type. And, um, and then I've got my original exception back. And just to show you, I'll do x dot get message. So I'll get this message here. And if I run that, then I get my message if it throws the, this exception. Um, one last thing for this tutorial is sometimes you, yeah, actually um, I should mention that future has some use, useful, ex, uh, useful methods besides get. Um, it has um, a method that allows you to cancel your thread. And we haven't looked at, as I say, interrupting threads yet. And we'll look at that next time, but this could be useful for you. And also there's, um, there's a is done method that tells you whether your thread has finished yet or not. But now, um, 
Supposing you want to use some methods of future, um, but you don't want to get a return result, you can do that by saying um, uh, here for your future, specify a question mark um, wildcard for the parametri parametric type, and for callable, specify void with capital V because you can't have a primitive lowercase v void type in, in these angle brackets, of course. And here, specify the same thing here, and then down here, just return null. And that allows you to use all the methods of, um, of future, um, but um, you don't have to return a result. So that's it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're going to look at interrupted exception and interrupting threads. So join me again then, and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.